Okay, so how does the whole 3D thing work anyway? Well, there's a typical workflow, and that is model, texture, light, animate, render, and composite. Now, I say it's a typical workflow. That's because you're not always going to use all of these things, but you will always use some of these things. So instead of trying to explain it to you, I thought it would be better just to show you. So let's pretend that we have a project from a client and don't worry about trying to follow along with this. We're going to go over all of these things in more detail in later tutorials. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. So again, let's pretend that we have a client and he wants us to create a logo for him. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and drop a floor object into my scene. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a text object. Let's go ahead and call this something more meaningful. There we go. All right, let's zoom out so we can see it. I'm going to go ahead and change the font to a thick font, something like an Arial Black. There we go. And maybe scale that down a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and put an extrude nerves into the scene, or an extrude, and we'll put the text under the extrude nerves as a child. And if we click on the extrude, we can control the depth of that, negative or positive. So let's say that we like that. This is the modeling portion of our project so far. So let's move on to the texturing portion. I'm going to double click here, create a new material. I'm going to double click this material to pull up the material editor. I'm going to give this a color, something like a light gray. I'm going to turn on the reflection. I'm going to dial the reflection way down, something like that. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this on the floor object. I'm going to hold Control or Command and drag to create another material. I'm going to double click on this material and I'm going to change this color to something more along these lines, like that. I'm going to take this material and I'm going to drag it onto the extrude object. And now, if we do a quick render, you can see how the materials are interacting. And this has completed the texturing portion of this project for our new client. Okay, so let's take a look at the lighting. Let's drop a light into the scene. We'll click this icon here, and I'm going to hit E on my keyboard to get to the Move tool. I'm going to pull that up a little bit. I hit the middle mouse button to go to a four-way view, and I'm going to hit the middle mouse button with my cursor over the top view to go into that view. And I'm just going to take this, move this in the front, and that'll be my key light. Let's call that key. Control or Command click drag up to duplicate that. Call this one back. We'll just drag this back here. Control or Command click. Drag again. We'll call this side. And we will drag that one over here. So let's middle mouse click again. Let's go back into this perspective view. I'm going to drag a rectangular select. Select all of these and pull the intensity down a little bit. I'm going to select the key light, and I'm going to turn shadows on for that. I'm going to do another quick render, and you can kind of see my shadowing back here and how the lighting is affecting the scene. So that completes the lighting portion of our project. Now let's take a look at the animation portion. I'm going to take and drop a camera into the scene, and I'm going to click this icon to go into the camera view. I'm going to come over here and change this from 800 by 600 to 1280 by 720. Okay, and I am going to just sort of get this camera where I want it to end up at. I am going to duplicate the camera, so we'll call this one Camera End, Camera Begin. I'm going to go into that camera. I'm going to pull this up and sort of get it into a position that I want the camera to begin in. I'm going to select these two cameras, come over to Create, Camera, Camera Morph, and then I'm going to select this icon for the Camera Morph camera. Now if I drag the Blend 
parameter here, I go from the camera end to the camera begin or vice versa. So I'm going to start here and I'm at zero in my timeline. I'm going to control or command click the blend parameter. I'm going to go to 50 and I'm going to pull that blend all the way up to 100%. Control or command click again. So now if we go back, we can see that we have done the animation portion of our project. Okay, so what I need to do now is go ahead and take my timeline down because I have my animation going from zero to 50. So basically, let's say that it should end at 60. So I'm gonna take and change this number here to 60. And that way it takes my total timeline to 60. So let's render this out now. I'm gonna to go to my render settings and I have my Camera set to 1280 by 720. The resolution is 72. All this looks good. Frame rate is 30 frames per second. I want to change the frame range from current to all frames. So now it's going from 0 to 60. We need to save it in a particular place. So we can do that right here. Click on here. Go to where you're going to save it. And mine is right here in Infinite Skills and I will create a new folder. I'll call it render. This is just something that I do. Click on that, call it 1618. Now we can choose which format we want. Right now we're set to TIFF PSD. I'm going to choose a ping sequence. If you need to have an alpha channel, you can select that here. I'm not gonna choose it for this particular project. Anti-aliasing, I'm going to take that from geometry to best. And that looks like it's about it. So after I get that done, I'm going to come over here and click on Render to Picture Viewer. And it's going to start the rendering process. Okay, so we're back and we can see that our animation has completed. So what I would do at this point is I would take this into a compositing program. My particular compositing program is After Effects. So if I come over here, I double click. I go to where I save my files into my render folder. I can click on here and import ping sequence. I can take this information, drag it into a new comp. And we have the animation here. The great thing now is that you can use all of the power of After Effects like blurs that if you were to apply these in the 3D program would just take forever. So I've just applied real smart motion blur to this and I could take up the blur amount like this. So to get this sort of reaction in a 3D program would take an incredible amount of render time. Okay. And we'll delve into some of these concepts in greater detail in later chapters. But for now, that's the basic workflow when you're working in 3D. Model, texture, light, animate, render, and then composite.